Hey, how's it going guys? In this video, I want to talk about Hikikomori. You're probably just like, what is that? You know, but <laughs> it's worth your time, I'm telling you. It's one of the most interesting and fascinating concepts that you will ever hear about. I'm also going to be explaining a lot of the different misconceptions that there are about Hikikomori and also whether or not it's just a Japanese phenomenon or if it applies to other countries like America. Before I start, also feel free to subscribe uh, just click the button down below. Also comment if you like this video or if there's anything that you want to say. But yeah, let's get into it. In the past few weeks, I have been doing a lot of research into the lifestyles of hikikomoris and I've also watched a few documentaries. And the number one problem that I have with these documentaries is that they, they just, they always try to stereotype it. Like if you watch these documentaries, you would have the idea that hikikomori are just people who stay in their house all day and do nothing but play video games and just watch anime 24 7 and uh, have a bunch of like figurines you know there's also this misconception that somehow these people are just lazy and that they're taking no responsibility and that it's their fault that they've gotten into into the position that they're in but the reality is that hikikomori are not lazy and although it is true that they spend most of their time inside it is not the case that at least for the majority of hikikomoris that they're just playing video games or watching anime um, the vast majority of them do not do that actually. So what is a hikikomori then? What is the medical <laughs> diagnosis? What is the medical definition? To put it simply, all a hikikomori is, it's just like, you know, think like being an introvert, except for like on steroids. <laughs> to qualify as a hikikomori, you need to have six months or more of social isolation. And no, I'm, not, I'm not talking about just like normal social isolation. We're just like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I need to take a break, you know? I need, to, I need to take a social detox. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about six months in your room <laughs> by yourself. There also is, I should say, an exception where you still qualify as a hikikomori if, let's say, for example, maybe you, every like a week or so, you go to the convenience store, pick up some supplies. That still counts, I guess. But <laughs> as far as having a normal social life, it's non-existent. Hikikomoris have no social life whatsoever, even when they talk to their own parents. <laughs> there is no dialogue. There is no affection, really. There is no proper communication. Their three social systems between the self, the, the society, and then the family are all cut off. What I find really, really interesting about Hikikomoris, though, is that most of these people actually are in the middle class. You will find it very difficult to find Hikikomori that is poor because if you're poor you cannot support <laughs> that lifestyle you cannot live the the hikikomori lifestyle so most of these people are in the middle class and the reason why they can live the way they do is because their parents are supporting them their parents have enough money where they can say hey okay fine you can live your lifestyle or whatever we'll, we'll pay you we'll give you an allowance we'll give you food uh, we'll give you video games <laughs> stereotype that's that's not no, these people for the most part cannot live on their own. And the vast majority of cases involve a hikikomori that's being supported by their family. Very rarely will you see a hikikomori living on their own. And in fact, those are the, actually the cases where you end up seeing a lot of suicides or deaths because they literally have no will to live. Um, there's been numerous reports of, of hikikomori who literally uh, just rot away after their parents die because they don't know how to cook for themselves, they don't know how to clean for themselves, they don't know how to socialize, they're afraid of going outside, so they literally just die. <laughs> literally. It's sad, but that is something that happens a lot. Or, you've also seen these other cases where they will literally <sighs> murder their parents if they don't help them out. Again, this is a, this is a very, very, very small amount of cases uh, when murder is involved, but, but for these people who have murdered, um, which again is a very low number. What you actually see is that the reason that they do that is because their parents tend to say, well, look, I'm not gonna support you. You have to go out on your own. And these people, again, are so traumatized and a lot of that trauma tends to be from the parents. That could be from physical abuse, from uh, mental abuse, et cetera, et cetera. But at that point, they're just like, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna die off anyway, so I might as well just get my revenge on, on, on my parents, which is, uh, it's, it's obviously messed up. But again, this is a minority of the cases for, you know, very few hikikomori actually do that. So one thing that's really funny is that I was talking to my friend the other day and he, 
uh, was aware of Hikikomori's. I actually watched a short documentary with him a long time ago on the subject. And on that call, basically, I was like, hey, do you want to guess how many Hikikomori are? Like right now, if you could guess how many Hikikomori are in Japan, what would you say? And I also told him that there's over, there's about 120 million people in Japan. And he said, okay, okay. He said, um, 2,000. I said, nope, that's, that's, not, that's wrong. He said, oh yeah, you're right. That, that's, that's probably too much. Maybe like 500? I was like, no. <laughs> to his complete shock, I told him that Japan recently did a nationwide survey and what they found out was that there is actually at the very minimum 500,000 hikikomori living in Japan right now. And other experts have actually said that it's probably even greater than that. A lot of people think that there might be at the very least 1 million or 2 million. That's about 1% of the population right there. That is a lot. That's, for example, makes it on par with a lot of various diseases like schizophrenia or PTSD. That's, that's a lot of people. So this isn't just some casual phenomena. And that brings us back to the question, well, is this just a Japanese thing then? Well, they've actually done a bit of research on this and they wanted to figure out, okay, hey, are there people in the United States who qualify for these symptoms? Are there other countries that have people that experience hikikomori-like symptoms? And the answer to that question is absolutely yes, a resounding yes. Research has demonstrated that there's people in countries such as the United States, such as in India, and even Finland who have these symptoms and would qualify as a hikikomori. However, <laughs> I think this is the main thing, right? You have to understand that, okay, there might be a few hikikomori living in the United States, but I highly doubt it's almost like uh, half a percentage of the population or 1% of the population. That's, that's, that's an astronomical amount um, for a disorder. You would probably say, okay, it's probably gonna be a very, very, very small amount of people. Certainly not like 500,000, maybe a few thousand, but not 500,000. You just would not expect that. In the United States. There is also a bit of a controversy behind the term hikikomori because it's not really an official diagnosis per se. If you look at the DSM-5, which is the uh, American Psychological Association's manual that lists all the different psychopathologies, mental disorders, etc, etc, you will not find social isolation or anything like hikikomori on that list. Even in Japan, they're still struggling to really identify what a hikikomori is. Like I said, the main point is that, yeah, people who stay inside for about six months qualify as that. But is it really a disorder on its own or is there another reason why people are staying inside for six months? For example, if maybe a person's just really depressed and they don't wanna go outside. Maybe that's the cause of the disorder. And it actually turns out that they've done a lot of research trying to figure out whether or not things like depression, PTSD, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia actually explain the hikikomori-like symptoms. And what they found is that, yes, most of these cases are actually explained by other disorders. And they also took into consideration that, well, there's also the question which came first, the chicken or the egg? Was it the depression that caused the social isolation or was it the social isolation that caused the depression? And even when they took those factors into account, they still came to the same conclusion that most of these cases are easily explained by other psychological disorders. However, it did turn out that there were a small amount of these cases that could not be explained by any other disorder. So this lets us know that, hey, uh, at least with some of these hikikomoris, the social isolation, the social withdrawal can't be explained by anything else. So there is something unique about it. There's something unique about a lot of these cases. And some might even argue that, yeah, hikikomori is a disorder. It's a very real disorder. And it's not just a symptom. Anyway, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. But before you go, you know, subscribe. Subscribe, P please subscribe, because I'm also gonna be posting a few other videos on hikikomoris, including a very important topic that's what causes somebody to be a hikikomori and also how to cure hikikomori. That's right, I'm a doctor. I, I am a certified doctor. <laughs> that video will actually be based on the recommendations and advice of the very psychologist who coined the term hikikomori. So yeah, definitely subscribe. That'd be, that'd be great, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching anyway, guys. I really appreciate it. Take care.